Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and there's two reasons I bought this comic. Is uh, I wanted to talk about the comic itself as well as the uh, uh, the company Dynamite. What what two reasons did you think I bought it for? So anyway, this is Deja Thoris number three. Um, uh, uh, comes out from Dynamite Comics, and um, I thought of an idea for this thing called that. Seriously, uh, it's called. Um, anatomy lesson and the idea is to discuss the anatomy of a company um, a, a friend sent in a bunch of st statistics about companies and he, he did something interesting he went to like back when my first campaign ended and when the tortious interference in May of 2018 and then he did every single company all of the money they made from the direct market and then divided by how many books so he was able to get average sales per title and basically, all this, you know, really successful crowdfunding, uh, me, Ethan Van Skyver, John Malin, uh, Doug Tenopel, probably Mike Miller, uh, probably a couple of others I'm forgetting about, our average sales per title exceed the industry lead of DC, which has the highest average sales per title. Um, the most sales you know, for the last couple of years, of course, is uh, Marvel. Um, uh, but weirdly enough, at the, uh, at the end of the direct market, uh, as I said, my prediction is this year the bottom falls out, and in, I'm going to say two years, simply two years, we are going to be in a much, much different environment. It's going to be smaller, lighter, faster, but also probably more profitable per title. Um, I'm actually starting to pay attention to companies that I didn't pay attention to. I was like, oh, wow. So I'm looking at, you know, Vault, um, uh, Black Mask, which it looks like it's kind of dying, um, Dark Horse, IDW, all of them. It's, it's very interesting. You know, really trying to own not just guy who does comic things, but I'm a publisher. I have a company. I should compare myself to other publishers and other companies. Um, so I'm looking for lessons out there. I'm looking at Marvel. The the indies are better because they're you know obviously closer to the to the size of uh, uh, my company. I can't get that many lessons from Marvel or DC. But I look at companies like IDW. Um, or, I was going to say early years. Basically, their 15 first years are like an ideal uh, company to emulate. Um, of course, Dark Horse was kind of the first real indie. Uh, some old heads were basically bringing up their like, um, you know, Dark Horse was just like little teeny tiny books. And then they got the license for Aliens. And then they got other licenses. And that's how they became like the premier indie until, you know, Image became not just, you know, vanity for, like, the image guy, founders, but, you know, like, a, it became, like, an indie powerhouse. Um, so I'm looking at all these things. So um, Dynamite is, they've done some things I've really targeted for cringe, but what happens is I started to kind of know Dynamite more because I didn't buy a lot of Dynamite comics. I mean, definitely not before I started reviewing. And, but, I, but I was kind of surprised how I, I would not consider myself to be a huge James Bond fan, the way I am a huge a fan of, you know, Expendables and G.I. Joe and John Wick. But I looked it up one time and I've done a ton of videos on the James Bond comics, like tons, like I think like two dozen. Um, so the main thing I knew Dynamite for back in the day is they always had the black and white interiors, which I weirdly respected because it's a money move. It's an idea of, you know, you got this company. See all these people listed down here. So this would probably be all full-time employees. And every little penny counts. Having black and white interiors is cheaper than having full color interiors. And over a year and over, I think that spreadsheet of the, the guy, he said this company made like something like 100 titles um, in a year. Uh, it adds up. So that's what I always knew them as. They were the ones that had very high quality, you know, covers and the, the paper and the print. Uh, they do glossy. They don't do matte. I don't think I've ever seen a matte finish, but it's not like annoying glossy, like where you have to constantly do this so you can read the, the page. It's, it's, it's good. What I'm saying is their form factor is consistently good. It is higher than Marvel. It is, well, I mean, DC does lots of different type of stocks. As far as I can tell, Dynamite does all of the stocks. And again, this is an interesting thing just to talk about, you know, everything I know about a company uh, at one time and then for people to do, you know, little corrections. Oh, well, actually for, the, you know, but as far as I can tell, it feels like every single Dynamite comic I've ever had has the same interior stock and the same uh, cover stock. So the other thing they do, oh, but should I, okay, should I talk about the comic? It's Deja Thoris, it's Dan Abnett, it's Vasco 
Oh, okay, so I'll do it right here. So typically, as far as I can tell, the model for um, the model for dynamite is they like to do licenses, um, and they do multiple covers. And what they will typically do is get a, a you know licenses you've heard of. They don't have like GI Joe or Terminator, but they've got like good. I would say for like middle aged people that you know about them, you know like John Carter, and then they have some things that everyone knows like John Wick. Um, but they have licenses, and then they're go usually going to put a good writer. They're going to have Warren Ellis. They're going to have Greg Pak. They're going to have um, uh, Benjamin Percy. Um, they're going to have Dan Abnett. Um, uh, uh, geez, I'm blanking on his name. Christopher Priest. They're going to have a good, you know, uh, writer. And then they're going to have somebody as the interior, Vasco Georgia. Uh, who I'm going to assume is from Europe. And you're going to see this art. This art is not bad. It is competent. It's not that great. The selling, as far as I can tell, Dynamite sells on Deja Doris, you know, the John Carter franchise, franchises, licenses. They sell on the writer. And then when it's time to draw it, it's, so, let's just say, somewhat affordable. Uh, because they put a lot of their other money into this. As far as I know, and I might be wrong, I think every single Dynamite comic does this. They're going to have multiple covers. So you got um, uh, some a couple of painted uh, covers. And then you get like a photo cover. And then you get this like, um, they call it incentive. You know, black and white for this one. Tinted for this one. I actually think that's more stylish. Then you get the black and white art. And then they have some more over here. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's a fun concept. Uh, the... The economics of it, I'm, I am just right now. My my previous jawbreakers had two covers. We have, um, let's just say, a lot on the expendables right now, and I still need to crunch the numbers on, am I making money or losing money by doing this? Because you know I'm paying other people for their original art, and um, uh, so, as far as the story, um, it was competent. It's probably like the the Dan Abnett story I've liked the least. One of the things about John Carter is it's very, very complicated, but it's also very simple. It's got a very intense, you know, mythology for the world of Mars, Barsoom, and all the different cultures and tribes and all those type of things. But then when you get to the characters and that are specifically archetypes, most of the women are pretty much the same. Most of the men are pretty much the same. It's just this is like a little bit more evil, a little bit more sneaky um one of my favorite uh traits of john carter is that he's afraid of the dark not like indiana jones but there'll be whole passages of just him like going through a tunnel and then like kind of almost freaking out because he realizes he's lost i just wrote a scene like that into uh uh jawbreaker's grand bazaar and i'm like no this is this is john carter right here so he's and he's kind of like a big dummy too <laughs> like he's always like you got to read it like it, he's not like but like He'll, ch he'll chase Deja Thoris from being kidnapped, and then he'll rescue her. And then he'll say, stay right here, and he won't watch her, and then she gets kidnapped again. Like, that's literally an entire uh, novel. But not really my thing. I think that uh, John Carter needs more style to it, more sabor, and it needs to be concentrated. Deja Thoris, in all the books that I've read from Dynamite, she's like woman hero. But Deja Thoris has, you know how I was saying everyone's kind of the same? The only people who have very distinct uh, personalities are like John Carter, Deja Thoris, Tars Tarkas. Deja Thoris has a really specific personality. Uh, I would describe her as like the, the meanest that Princess Leia ever gets. And Princess Leia is directly influenced by Deja Thoris. The meanest Princess Leia ever gets is the nicest Deja Thoris. She's just a bitch on wheels. <laughs> she's a bitch. Um, I mean, she's really, you know, like, kind of like in a, like a weirdly attractive way but she's a bitch um and that's kind of part of her personality people just kind of back off like what do we do why did we why did we kidnap her oh well, she's you know she's the princess um but yeah so so getting back to the to the model is they uh black and white then you know it's going to be focused on the franchise and the writer specifically the interiors are going to be okay um uh and uh then they will, they will not have that many ads. They will have some ads in the story. Um, I know especially people who read manga and 
European Bande Dessinés, BDs, they're always kind of shocked. I, I, I will say as an American, I don't even notice ads, which is kind of goes against the point of ads. Like I just turn the page and I get back to the story. But they tend to backload most of their ads um, in the back, duh. Uh, so uh, I've seen one, two, I've seen Dynamite comics that have like 14 pages of ads, but they're all at the back. This one has less, uh, I remember a couple years ago, they were always selling like statues and stuff. Uh, so I'm not seeing as much as that. I'm just seeing, you know, this, uh, what is, it looks like a hardcover. Vampirella, got Army of Darkness, another license. And I guess they don't have like a page that shows you like all the comics they have this month. They're also, they do this a lot, the interviews, which I think is really cool. I, I don't care about Nancy Drew, but if this was someone talking about, you know, new John Wick or the new James Bond or whatever, I would definitely be uh, into it. So uh, that's it. Again, uh, for the for this comic, uh, not a recommend. I mean, even as a John Carter, it, it wasn't like pissing me off. It was not SJW. It was just kind of like I didn't understand like why are the why are the Martians have just like pink Caucasian skin tones? Like that's that's not a thing in Barsoom. Like that's only John Carter has you know whatever you call Caucasian skin tones. Um, and like I said, the, the, the art's fine, but yeah. Um, but uh, it's interesting. So uh, I'm trying to think of other companies that I know well enough to do, because I was actually kind of shocked at how many Dynamite comics I reviewed, like 20 different James. I don't remember that. Um, uh, actually, Dynamite's kind of bubbled to the top as, you know, Marvel is just a complete joke. DC's is just not really my thing. So I feel bad when I go into the store and I don't buy a lot of stuff. So I'll, you know, I'll go look at the um, IDW or the Image or the uh, Boom or uh, Dynamite. So Dynamite of the Indies to me has been like the most consistent. And they do like good hires and they also have to do hires like, really bro, seriously? But anyway, so uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. And I will have a uh, new and old comic book reviews all this week. Thanks. Bye.